Hello everyone, it is January 13th, 2019, and I arrived this evening in Montreal. Um, my first stage phalloplasty procedure is going to be on Tuesday, the 15th of January, um, and because I'm from Ontario, um, they ask that you're in the city by Sunday evening. Um, and then Monday is bowel preparation day, um, and then you get up at the crack of stupid on Tuesday to go to the hospital for six in the morning, um, or at least that's when I was told to be there. Um, so I just wanted to talk about why I chose phalloplasty and why now. Um, if you don't know, I am 22 years old, just turned 22 at the end of 2018, and, um, I have been going through this process, if you've watched my videos for the past few years, then you know that I have been going through the process of trying to get phalloplasty for almost three years now, um, from the active, like, starting the approval process from OHIP all the way until now has been almost three years, just over like two and a half. I think it was May of 2016 or something. Um, and so I would have been 19 years old when I started the process, which is quite young. And, you know, I see a lot of other guys around my age having phalloplasty, um, but I also see a lot of older guys having phalloplasty, um, and I'm, over the past couple months since I got, like, the actual legitimate, this is your date, we need you here at this time kind of thing, uh, I've been feeling and, and realizing how young I am to be making this decision, and it's not to say that I'm thinking that I'm too young and naive or whatever to be making this decision at this age. It's just that, you know, this is a life-changing moment. Whether or not this goes as I hope it will, or hopefully not terribly wrong, um, whether I end up regretting it, hopefully I don't, um, or I absolutely love it, and this is the best decision I've ever made in my life, or if it just turns out to be like all my other surgeries and trans-related stuff that I've done in that, I just kind of shrug and go like, yeah, no, this is the way it was supposed to be. This isn't that big a deal to me. Because I just woke up from top surgery feeling like, yeah, now it looks right. Um, rather than being super overwhelmed, and that's just because I'm kind of a monotone person, like I don't get, I don't know, I just don't get super excited about things. Um, even though I am internally excited, I just don't outwardly kind of feel it. So anyway, um, you know, regardless of the outcome of this, this is a life-changing moment. And even if it is all of the things I hoped it, it's going to be and more, there's still a debilitating factor of the recovery which is extreme from what I've seen um, and what I've been told. And the fact that I'm, you know, giving up pieces of my body to, to put and, and form a phallus is, is a huge decision. And so why now? For me personally, this is the right time. You know, the stars are aligning here. I've been working on trying to get this done for years. Uh, finally, all the paperwork, all of the OHIP approval, all of the doctor's approvals, and, you know, whatever stuff I needed to get done is all done. And I worked so hard for it. And I did it myself. There was nobody to help me with any of that. Um... I don't think anybody in my family or any of my friends or anything actually legitimately realize how 
much time and money than I have put into this already. And I haven't even had surgery yet. And I did it all myself. I, did, I didn't have any help. I had to, I had to harass my doctors for years. I had to, you know, really plan and, and purchase things and, you know, do all these things that I don't think other people in my life realize. I think they just are like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this is what you wanted. You're doing this. That's great. The government's covering it. Fine. Um, but I don't think that they, they see the whole story. Um, and so these past few years have been rough because it felt like nothing was moving forward ever because every time I took a step forward, it felt like I was taking 10, te 10 steps back. And I did make a video recently about my prior approval form that I had to renew for OHIP coverage and how when I got the letter saying that I the, the approval and the coverage was extended, um, I, I broke down because I just, I didn't realize how much it had been weighing on me that the prospect of not being able to have this surgery was until it was approved again and I just, everything crashed down and all of that stress and anxiety just crashed down and was like a relieving pressure. And, but aside from, you know, the emotional feelings of like why I need this surgery now, I have a job that I can take eight weeks off of and not have it be an issue. I have a job that I love. This eight weeks is gonna be really tough for me because I love my job. My last day of work was yesterday, it was Saturday. And you know, all my coworkers, none of them know what the surgery is. They just know I'm having surgery. And they're all super supportive and, and you know, everybody in my community, um, because I work in a community-based setting, all of all of the people I interact with on a daily basis, they have no idea what's going on, but they know I'm having surgery, and they've all like, they've all said some really really lovely things and given me really positive energy, and just I'm in a place where, you know, even though, like, 99% of the people in my life don't know the full story, there's love and support surrounding me right now. And I can confidently leave my job for eight weeks and come back and know that even though I'm going to be on reduced, you know, tasks and whatever, that it's not going to be a problem. Financially, I've saved so much of all of my paychecks to be able to comfortably deal with any of the costs associated with this surgery, which even though the government is covering it, the costs of all the side stuff that the government does not cover is very high. Electrolysis and laser are very expensive. The train to get here, the travel to get home, um, all of the medical stuff that I had to buy in preparation at home so that when I get home, I still have stuff to, to wrap my wounds and all these things. Um, you know, and I didn't even buy all of them. I bought enough to last me a certain amount of time, but I know I'm going to have to go out and buy more and restock. Um, you know, the, the cost of all the doctor's notes I needed, all of the, anytime they sign something, they want to, they, they, they charge you for it. And it's, you know, it's not, it, it adds up. It's a lot of money. And I am extremely aware of how privileged I am to be able to afford this because it is not this is not accessible to people uh, and I understand why in addition to how tough emotionally and physically this surgery is going to be but financially it's crippling and I am currently in a place where I have disposable income because I live with my parents and I pay very little rent um, comparatively to like what I would pay if I had to live on my own um, I'm able to save money, and I've done that consciously over the past several years because I knew I would have to pay for all this stuff, and I'm able to do that right now at this point in my life. Um, so that's definitely another reason why phalloplasty is happening now as opposed to years later. Um, I always thought 
that this surgery would happen when I was like in my 30s. I just assumed that the wait lists would be so long. I assumed that I just wouldn't be ready, that I wouldn't be able to do it, that I wouldn't be able to afford it, that I wouldn't, whatever, all of these things. I just assumed that even though I had started the process when I was 19, that it was going to be like 10 years until I was able to actually have it. It just felt so unattainable. Um, and now here we are, top of 2019, and I'm 22, and it's happening. So I just, I don't know what I'm feeling, but I know that this is the right time. It just feels right. And even though I've been panicking for the past month or so, I've now entered into my numb stage where I just accept that it's happening and I'm, I'm just ready to get it over with. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, children in the hallway, <laughs> um, the other thing is I don't dysphoria wise, and I don't know if I've talked about this already recently. I'm kind of in a numb place where I'm aware of what my body looks like, but I don't pay enough attention to it or focus on it because I know if I do, I get upset. But it's not crippling dysphoria like my dysphoria used to be in the past, like with my chest and stuff. It is more just I have an aversion to what's there. And I just kind of look the other way. Um, when I was younger, like when I was a teenager, I couldn't, I couldn't look at my body. I couldn't shower. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't change without feeling this crippling, like crushing feeling. But now I don't feel that. And there are days when I'm like, why am I doing this if I don't feel dysphoria? But it's not that I don't feel the dysphoria. It's that I've numbed myself to it. And I don't want to think about it too hard. I haven't been in a relationship for a while. I haven't been sexually active in a while. So I don't have that aspect of it. And I know that if that aspect is brought in, that I feel worse. So that's helped as well with being able to ignore it because I don't have someone else in my life having to deal with it. Um, but it's that feeling of like, I'm not not dysphoric. It's that I've just... I've numbed myself to the dysphoria and accepted it as part of my life and just kind of um, learned to deal with it in more healthy ways. But that doesn't mean I'm not still upset by my body. And I have to, sh I already did, but I have to shave from my stomach all the way down to my knees and all up in that area. And I've never shaved anything in my life on my body. And I had to do that. And actually fully seeing what's there with no hair being able to block it and cover it and hide it I just looked in the mirror and I didn't like in the past that would have completely crippled me that that sight but I I just looked and it it just doesn't look right I it just doesn't look right it doesn't feel right and I'm okay enough now to look at it and, and accept that that's what it looks like right now. I'm also, obviously, it's going to be gone in like two days, but, and that's helping. But like, just looking at it, I'm like, this is not supposed to be there. It's just not. And I'm glad I had to do that because I've been feeling really scared about this surgery for a while now. And I, there were days when I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> this is going to be tough. And and I'm here alone. I don't have anybody with me. So, but having to actually see what's there right now and just look at it and go, no, this is the right decision. This is absolutely 110% the right decision because it's just not right right now. And... Yeah, I just, I don't really know how else to explain it. I know I seem like really 
down and not super excited or anything but like I said I'm very I'm not a very excitable person um I just yeah I feel like I don't like to take risks I have never in my life been a risk taker I don't go out of my comfort zone ever I don't like doing that my transition has pushed me out of my comfort zone forced me out of it my physical transition that is and this surgery is the only one that's really kind of like I paused about top surgery and a hysterectomy were like yeah I need to get that done for sure but this one was like I don't know if I want to do this this is this is huge this is major I don't know if I want to do this and but the thought of not doing it when all of these other things like I've mentioned in this video have a, are aligning right now if I didn't do this now I think that the regret I would feel and the what if I would feel up until the point when I had this surgery because it wasn't a choice of like for me it wasn't a choice of if I'm gonna have this surgery it was when um, I'm a procrastinator and I could push the surgery off for 10 years and but still end up having it eventually and I the what if you know what if I had done it when I was 22 when I had the opportunity instead of when I'm in my 30s or something and I you know decide okay now I'm ready uh, it would be crippling because I still feel that what if about testosterone what if I had told my parents earlier what if I had just called the doctor myself instead of trying to wait for my mom to do it what if I had you know come out or earlier what if I had saved money for top surgery earlier all of these things constantly weigh on me and I know that like I try to work through regret because I don't like to regret things but there's this surgery completely apart from like what I could have done there were times when my doctors were not doing things they were supposed to be doing which made this take longer than it had to but but apart from, like from me from my own like working towards this there was nothing I could have done differently to make this go faster so this is the right time for this I don't think I'm gonna regret not having tried to do this earlier because there was no way to do it earlier I think that this is the time for this surgery and even if the doctors had been faster at filling out the forms and had not lost the paperwork multiple times that would have put me probably in having phalloplasty last year about a year ago and I don't think I would have been ready for it honestly and truly I wouldn't have had an extra year to save up all that money I wouldn't have um, you know I wouldn't have the confidence that I do now I wouldn't have the security in my job that I do now because I've I've worked there for over two years now and I've got I've gained the trust and respect of the people around me at my job enough to feel super confident about taking an eight-week leave and been able to save up a year's worth of income in order to put towards this surgery all of that stuff wouldn't have been in place last year if I had had this surgery a year ago and it's just it's the right time and I I'm excited I'm scared I'm so scared I'm nervous and anxious and happy and all of the emotions all put together and yeah I think now's the time so that's that's why now um, and as far as phalloplasty um, it's to me it was my only option I metodioplasty would would not have helped me at all as soon as I learned what the difference was between the two of them there was never a question in my mind that phalloplasty was the answer for me and that's just I'm looking for something to feel like it's there I'm looking for something that I can look at and go like that's mine and 
I want to pee standing up really badly. Um, I I just, I don't need a, a cis penis. I don't. I'm never going to have that. I know that. I just want one that's mine. And I feel like phalloplasty has the potential to do that for me. And so that's that's why I made that decision because it was it was never a question in my mind it was either phalloplasty or no surgery at all um and i i'm happy for people who've had metoidioplasty i i i wish that i could go for that because there are points of it that i really do like um but i couldn't in for myself this has nothing to do with anybody else's choices for surgery or anything like that. But for myself, I could not go through a major surgery like that and and not have something more tangible. Because like I said, I'm not like I'm not really bothered by what I have. I want it to be completely different. Metoidioplasty wasn't different enough from what I currently have to to make me happy and I just I don't know and a lot of people are like the arm is a big deal to them it, the scar isn't a big deal to me maybe I'll change my mind after it's there but it, it never really was like a oh no I'm gonna have a huge scar because I don't really care um, people ask questions all the time people say things all the time I'm good at making up answers. I don't really care. I'm also fascinated by the human body and watching my arm heal is going to be an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, I appreciate if you've made it to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please, please let me know. If you've had phalloplasty and you want to chat, please let me know. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya.